in color. The continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Arvel Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington, Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington, James Douglas as Stephen Cord. To Lee Weber, the house of Martin Payton is an imposing symbol of power and wealth. Under normal circumstances, he would never see this house from the inside. But tonight, Lee has seized the opportunity to invade a world so long denied him. Well, Mr. Weber? It's a great house. It'll really look terrific after it's all fixed up. I mean, you'll never be able to tell that there was any kind of a fire. What do you want? I read your ad in the Clarion. Oh? Now, you need a chauffeur. I need a job. Now, what makes you think that I'd hire you to do anything? I know it's... It's wild, me coming to you for a job after what happened. After what they tried to say I did to your granddaughter. But I didn't, and they proved that during the hearing. And afterwards, you were the only one that came up to me and said congratulations. Did it mean that much to you? Sure, you were the only one. And now you want to return my consideration. Well, I figure I've got a lot to offer, sir. Such as? Well, I'm a first-rate mechanic. Anything they can make, I can fix. <laughs> so first-rate that my grandson Rodney fired you from his garage. That wasn't because I couldn't handle the work, sir. Then why? Personal reasons. Whose? His. You don't like Rodney. Do I have to like him to get the job? And my other grandson, Stephen, detests you. Look, I don't know what kind of garbage they've been telling you about me, but... Enough, enough. I don't know how to beg, Mr. Payne. And nobody can teach me. Allow me to consider your qualifications, if you have any. How's your motor running? Hmm, adequately. Well, I was the one that tuned it. It misses. Well, then the carburetor needs readjustment. I can fix it in five minutes. You see, Mr. Payton, when I heard that you were bringing the car to the garage, I ran right out and I got myself a couple of service manuals. Those farm jobs can be pretty rough, but I know every inch of that car of yours now. What else do you know? Try me. Do you know how to take orders? That depends on who gives them. Brandy. in the hall closet, the black one. Are you, are you going someplace, sir? You know how it works? Now I want to see if you can ride it. You watch me. In the corner, over there. Where are you going? Out. Why? Well, Mr. Weber has applied for the job of chauffeur. I want to see if he drives as well as he talks. Do you know what you're doing? Ask Betty to save me a piece of pie. Weber. I'll be here when you get back. Well, you uh, make yourself comfortable, Mr. Corden. Maybe a long wait. Come on now. 
Come on, open up. It's good for you. Come on, Matthew. Matthew, come on. Eat. Well, that's the first time I've ever heard you fuss with him. How's he doing? Oh, he's not. Want me to try? No, it's... It's just every time I offer it to him, he sets his jaw like granite. What's that other stuff? That's fruit. Does he like that? Oh, he'd eat two jars if I'd let him. Well, why don't you skip this stuff for tonight? Because Dr. Rossi says he needs the cereal. You... Come on, Matthew. And you can skip the cereal for one night anyway. He needs it, Elliot. Now, look at you're mad at me. Don't take it out on Matthew. I thought you had an article to finish. I just can't concentrate. This. Listen, Connie, I don't like what's happening. <sighs> Neither do I. I mean here, to our family. Look, Rachel's in Rita's apartment sleeping on a couch tonight, Elliot. Well, where was she sleeping before she joined us? She's our responsibility. No, Matthew is our responsibility. Allison is our responsibility. She's not our family, not Rachel Wells. Well, what do you expect from her? Just the truth. She's had a severe adjustment to make, Elliot. She's just a girl who's frightened. Every time you raise her voice, she doesn't know what she's saying. Look, crying out loud, I wasn't asking you for information about why the devil she wasn't home early enough from a date. I was asking you for information about Allison. That's all you've been doing ever since you first saw her. With good reason. Upset. Come on. See, she's staying at Norman and Rita's? Yes, they're putting her up for a couple of nights. A couple of nights? Well, how convenient. Just long enough for me to cool off and then go over and plead with her to come on back. I'm not going to try to change your mind anymore. This is your house. You're the one that makes the decisions. Oh, I see. Now our house has become a dictatorship, is it? I'm going for a walk. Are you going to the apartment? No, I'm not going to the apartment. Maybe we should get involved. I mean, how do we know she's going to stay for a couple of nights? Norman, Rachel doesn't have any place else to stay. Oh, we're almost ready. There. Now, if there's anything you need, please call, all right? All right. Okay. Good night, Rachel. Good night. Remember, if you need anything. Night. Good night. She hasn't got a place to stay, but she's going to have to find somewhere else. Norm, do you remember when Rachel locked herself in the supply closet at the hospital and Dr. Rossi called me to come talk to her? What's that have to do with it? Well, she was scared then, just like she is now. She needs somebody to be with her, somebody her own age. And I'm the only person like that she's got. And you're the only wife I've got. Rita, I feel sorry for her, and I'd like to help her. But I have to think of you. You're my whole life. And I don't want you getting involved in, in a strain that, that'll really bother you. Norman, I'm going to be okay, honest. Rita, will you level with me? What do you mean? We haven't kept any secrets from each other so far. Let's not start now. Norm. What haven't you told me about Rachel? Oh, I guess that's Dr. Rossi. Yeah.
coming through, okay? Are you going to open it? Sure, why not? Hello, Norman. Hi, Dr. Rossi. Come Hi. on. I talked to Reed on the phone. Rachel. Reed is in the bedroom. Look, I'm sorry to barge in on you like this. Is she sick? No, no, I uh, just gonna look at her. Dr. Rossi. Well, hi, Dr. Rossi. Oh, hello, Rita. Listen, I'm sorry I came by so late, but I'm gonna be in surgery tomorrow morning, and I wanted to come by and check up on you, make sure you were behaving yourself, huh? I've been loafing all day long. Well, that's good. So, Rachel's spending the night, huh? Yeah, maybe several. Well, why? Has she had another quarrel with Elliot? Yeah, a big one. Mrs. Carson's really worried about her, so I told her she could stay here for a while. How about you? You worried about her? She's too worried. I told her it's not good for her. All right, come in. Is she all right, doctor? Well, everything's fine. I have brought some medicine by I want you to take, though. Three pills tonight and three in the morning before you come to my office, hmm? Your office? Two o'clock. I want to try out a new diet on you, and also I have some new exercises I want you to start. Well, is brushing my teeth too strenuous an exercise? <laughs> well, no, I don't think so. Good night, Dr. Rossi. Thank you. Good night. Norman, listen, I want you to make sure that Rita takes that medicine, all right? Is she okay? Well, I just don't want anything to develop that doesn't have to, that's all. Is it going to be much of an inconvenience to you two to have Rachel stay here? No, I just don't want Rita to get involved in Rachel's problems. Why did Rachel leave the Carsons, anyway? I don't know. Rita knows, but she won't tell me. Well, don't press her, anyway. I don't want her to get excited about anything. Is she really sick? Well, I can't tell yet. Look, I'll show myself out. I want to talk to Rachel for a few minutes alone, huh? Okay, thanks for coming by. Good night. What's the matter with Rita? She's fine. Why did you come over here so late, then? Because I wanted to drop by some medicine, that's all. How are you? Rachel, you want to talk? Yesterday, you said... Yesterday, what I said needed to be said. I'd like to help. By giving me that puppy? By being your friend. Don't talk to me like that. Like what? Like a child. Rachel, obviously you don't understand, but Elliot Carson happens to be a friend of mine, too. And so is his daughter. You were right to take his side. I never should have gone to live with them. I only made them very unhappy. Why did you leave them? They argued. Elliot and Connie? about you? Well, that's only because they're concerned. Not him. He'll never trust me again. Oh, you have to give him a chance. I never should have gone there. You ought to be there now. And I can't ever go back. Why not? Because I, I lied to him about talking to Chandler. Because he trusted me and I lied. But tell him he'll understand. Tell him why you lied to him. He'll understand you. Good night, Rachel. 